So it's been about a year since I reviewed, then subsequently purchased the Rivendell Sam Hillborn, a bike that has been a bit of a dream bike slash grill bike for me for the last 20 years. And in that time, it's gone through a couple of iterations. And that's what we're going to talk about in this video. I'm going to talk about some of the upgrades and what I think of the Sam Hillborn a year later. Welcome back, everybody. And if you're into the non-competitive side of cycling, riding, party pace, you have found your people, hit that subscribe button. And if you guys enjoy this content, be sure to stop by the gift shop and pick up a sticker, a pin, some new prints. That's how we keep this channel going without me having to shill some random Trotsky every other video. So if you appreciate that, consider supporting the channel. When I first got the Rivendell, it was a very different bike. It was set up with the swept back billy bar and the whole vibe was more chill and relaxed and upright. Over the last year, I've swapped it out for the Bosco bar. Again, in that kind of more upright style, but ultimately the frame size didn't quite work for me for a swept back bar. And for me to get the bars where I wanted them, I needed to run a really tall and long stem. And after some experimentation, this is where the bike has landed. A little bit more, I guess, traditional road bike looking bike, if you will, but with some interesting quirks and components that I thought I would talk about in this video. First off, one of the big noticeable changes is the cockpit. I went with a drop bar, in this case, the Ritchie Venture Max, which come in silver, apparently. Someone on our Discord server tipped me off to this and I bought one and uh, it works really well with the Riv. It's kind of a, a wider bar with a little bit of flare, really shallow drop. I think that's its main value proposition. So the drop portion becomes functional rather than aspirational. For the stem, I did experiment with some nicer Nitto quill stems, but ultimately I've settled with this pretty basic setup. This is a Velo Orange threadless to quill stem adapter, and it is using one of their threadless silver stems that mates perfectly with it. Very inexpensive solution and gives me the flexibility to play with stem length as well as use handlebars with the 31.8 standard. Some may cringe because it's not aesthetically perfect, but for me, it's very functional. It makes it very simple to make changes and I think it looks pretty good. Other bits of interestingness on the handlebar is yes, I'm using uh, my favorite Gevinol shifters. So the bike is a two by setup and I'm running it friction front and rear and it works great. You can shift with friction without piercing your kneecap, apparently. There was a little bit of hackery involved to make it work with the pre-existing brakes, which are some uh, V-brakes. Some of you will know this, some of you may not, but in order to uh, use a brake with a V-brake, it has a different pull than a traditional road brake lever. So to make up for this difference in cable pull, I use the Problem Solvers Travel Agent. <laughs> They're not my favorite. They're kind of a pain to set up. Uh, a little bit ugly, but they do allow you to use road style brakes with V-brake. And yes, I'm fully aware that there are mini V-brakes. I have tried those in the past, but I find that this actually brakes better than using those mini V-brakes. And I know someone else is going to suggest, why didn't you use cantilevers? And yes, I could have done that. But again, you know, we don't have that GCM money. I'm trying to save on parts just like you guys. So this seemed like the path of least resistance and least money spent. But it stops well enough. I can lock up the rear wheel if I want to. I, I know that's not a sign of optimal brake performance, but just for the sake of argument's sake, there is enough power in the system to lock up the rear wheel. A couple other minor changes before we get to the biggest change on the bike. I did swap the saddle from the Brooks B17 to the Gilbert Taud Aspen Aspin. If you're curious as to why and how they're different, definitely check out the last video I uploaded comparing the Brooks B17 and the Gilbert Taud. On the back of the bike, to support the very massive Sackville bag, I replaced the smaller Nitto Marks rack with the Obento rack by Simworks. It's got a wider Demi Portour platform. Uh, you can set it up both on the front and in this case, the rear. Works great, highly recommend it. Probably the most significant change is the wheel set. I swapped out the tube velocity wheel set. Not that there was anything wrong with them, but I did want to run this uh, bike tubeless. And I purchased a pair of the Pacenti Brevet wheels in 650B tubeless uh, Shimano hub. I did spec it out with 135 spacing because that's what the Riv has. It's a wheel set that lots of people have recommended because for the money, it sounds pretty good. $450 doesn't include shipping and the wheels weigh in at just about 1500 grams, which is verging on the light to very light end of the spectrum for wheels. I did weigh everything in my notes. Uh, I've got 820 grams for the rear and 695 for the front. The wheels were pretty bare bones for 450 bucks. It didn't have 
uh, tubeless rim tape. So I had to uh, purchase that, apply it myself. It didn't come with tubeless valves. Again, these costs add up. So while 450 looks good on paper, it doesn't include all the other small things to make it plug and play. In addition to the wheels, I also swapped out the tires for my favorite 650B tires, the Soma Casaderos in 650B by 50. It's got a great tread pattern for mixed terrain riding, high center ridge for, you know, for pavement and the smoother roads, as well as blocky side knobs to give you some grip when things get a little loose. Not the most aggressive tire, not the fastest tire, but a good kind of Goldilocks in-between tire. Interestingly, with the tires and going tubeless and the new wheel set, the bike actually lost a fair amount of weight. So in the old configuration, uh, the bike weighed in at 12.7 kilograms, so about 28 pounds. With the new wheel set and going tubeless and the tires, it came in at just under 12 kilograms, 11.99 or 26.4 pounds. There was a minor reduction in overall weight, but interestingly, riding the bike with the tubeless setup really transformed the feeling, the ride of the bike. It felt like it accelerated a little bit quicker, maybe climbed a little bit better, and the difference was noticeable. If I were to put a percentage on it, I'd say it was 20% different. So for the most part, I do recommend this wheel set so far. I've not had it for very long, so I can't speak to durability. But in terms of upgrading a pre-existing bike, a rim brake 650B bike specifically, then yeah, definitely check it out. Pacenti 650B, Brevet wheels. It doesn't break the bank and will probably reduce your overall uh, wheel weight as well as bike weight. In this current iteration, the bike generally feels a little bit livelier, a little bit more get up and go. It's never going to be a full on racy road bike. That's not its intent, but it does have a little bit more spark to it now, making it more fun. And isn't that what bikes are supposed to be? Generally speaking, my impressions of the bike haven't changed too much. If I were to pick an adjective for the Rivendell, it would be smooth. It doesn't have the springiest steel to it, but at the same time, it doesn't feel like it's made out of lead pipes. I think with the high volume tires, long chainstay, generally long uh, wheelbase, climbs very smoothly upwards. It's not very staccato, like a really short and twitchy road bike. And descending, it stays pretty composed. Doesn't get knocked around by baby heads and ruts and all that stuff. Still smooth, still love it. It's a great counterpoint to my Crust Bambora, which I feel is a little bit more road-like, a little bit more quick and twitchy, and just generally a little bit spicy. So yes, you can like and appreciate two different styles of bike. You don't have to be, you know, 100% long chain stay or 100% tucked or die. You can you can ride both and appreciate both. So do I still love the Riv? 100%. I think the wheel set was a great upgrade. If you have any questions, leave those in the comments below. Don't forget to support the channel. Go visit the gift shop or join us on Patreon. I'm going to sneeze my brains out because of allergies. And as always, keep the supple side down.